Join us now for Education Matters, a weekly look at the real people and real stories in education across North Carolina. Welcome to Education Matters, presented by the Public School Forum of North Carolina. I'm Keith Poston. Last year, average pay for principals in North Carolina ranked 50th nationally. The General Assembly responded with $35 million in new investments in pay this year, along with a brand new pay plan. It's that new plan that is generating concerns. Critics say many principals may actually see a pay cut, and they point to a new performance pay element that could be a disincentive to take jobs at chronically low-performing schools. We're going to explore those issues and concerns and discuss the new plan on today's show. Before we tackle our main topic, we open with our headlines, a quick scan of education headlines across North Carolina and the U.S. Last week, the North Carolina Innovative School District, formerly known as the Achievement School District, narrowed its initial list of 48 low-performing schools eligible to be taken over to six. The list of schools on the list are on the screen. Schools chosen will be turned over to charter school operators, meaning local school boards will no longer have a say in the staffing, instruction, or other matters at those schools. Now, two of the schools on the list are in Durham, where the school board and superintendent had asked to be removed from consideration. Two schools will be chosen this year and three next year. Once a school is selected, the district must allow the school to be taken over or the school must be closed. Some Wake County parents are up in arms over the news that their children may be reassigned as part of the district's effort to meet the class size mandate from the General Assembly. Wake announced last week that they plan to close 25 elementary schools to new transfer students. Some schools will need other strategies, including reassigning current students and barring newly arriving families from enrolling even if they live right next to the school. The lower state mandated class sizes would require Wake County, for example, to create space for the equivalent of 9,500 seats or about 14 new elementary schools. Superintendent Jim Merrill sent a letter last week to Wake County members of the state legislature asking for help. Decisions in two education-related court cases were handed down last week by the North Carolina Court of Appeals. In one case, the judges ruled against the state board in a three-year-old lawsuit over whether the State Rules Review Commission has authority over state board policies. The Court of Appeals reversed a lower court ruling that the state board was exempt. The other case involved school funding in Halifax County. Now, in that case, the judges ruled against a parents group that had sued the county over inadequate support for the local school systems. The court found the responsibility to provide a sound basic education to North Carolina students rests with the state, not individual counties. Finally, this week marks the 60th anniversary of the integration of Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Nine African-American students were under National Guard protection integrated that school on September 25th, 1957. Even though the Supreme Court had found segregated schools unconstitutional three years earlier, across much of the South, strict Jim Crow laws had kept the schools separate. Remember, you can visit the Public School Forum's website at ncforum.org, click Education Matters, and read more about each of the headlines as well as the other topics we cover each week.